So we talked earlier about the various different tests the Supreme Court might use. Uh, could, let's just summarize them quickly. There's the, the Lemon test, which looks at both purpose and, and effect. effect. There is the uh, endorsement test, which looks at whether or not the Supreme Court, or excuse me. A reasonable observer would view what the government has done as an endorsement of religion. And then finally, the coercion test. Coercion test, Justice Kennedy's test from that uh, school prayer case, Lee versus Weissman, that's correct. So how might the choice of what test to use affect the possible result or the analysis that the court will undertake here? I think uh, in this case, the court has various options. As I read the Second Circuit decision written by Judge Calabresi for the panel, uh, he uses- That's the Court of Appeals. That's the Court of Appeals. Which rejected this practice. Correct, which held that it violated the Establishment Clause over the period of a decade or more. Uh, Judge Calabresi for the panel used uh, the endorsement test and found that under all of these circumstances, given the fact that we had overwhelmingly Christian clergymen and that a substantial majority of the prayers over this period of time were strictly secular, re refer referring to Jesus, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, and the like, uh, uh, that that flunked the endorsement test, that this was indeed an endorsement of religion. So the court could could with uh, this case decide applying the endorsement test again that it was not an endorsement of religion. That would be a fairly narrow uh, specific kind of decision. Um, the court could apply Justice Kennedy's much more deferential to religion, if you will, coercion test and say, unlike Lee versus Weissman, the case involving a school prayer at a middle school graduation, which involved children who were, if you will, coerced implicitly to be there. This involves adults. This has the traditional backing, if you will, of Marsh v. Chambers. It's been done since day one. So the court could say there is no serious problem under the coercion test, end of discussion. It's not likely that this court is going to do anything with the, uh, the lemon test because it has been discredited by probably the majority of the current Supreme Court. Is there any chance that the Supreme Court will move to a more religion restrictive standard as opposed to uh, moving toward from the endorsement test to the coercion test? Uh, I have not lost money in the last 15, 20 years betting against religion in the United States Supreme Court. Uh, this majority in particular, including Justice Kennedy, uh, who is usually the swing vote, will almost certainly reverse the Second Circuit's decision. The question is, what ground will it use? It can either, as I said a moment ago, uh, use the endorsement test and say the Second Circuit improperly applied the endorsement test, or it could uh, say that there is no real coercion here because we're dealing with adults at a, uh, uh, at a, at a town meeting. But no chance in my mind at all that uh, the court is going to come out uh, against religion, so to speak. It's going to be more permissive with respect to religion and the government's involvement in it, uh, I believe, in this case, eventually. So once again, to end where we began, the facts matter a lot. The facts always matter in Establishment Clause cases. Uh, very few bright lines, always case by case. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs>